Oregon is flush with fungi, home to hundreds of species of mushrooms. They thrive in the shade of the Pacific Northwest's damp forest floors. Many are edible, some are toxic. So when we decided to go mushroom hunting, we made sure to have some help from an expert. Dane Osis is a park ranger at Fort Stevens State Park near Astoria on the Oregon coast. He knows all about the mushrooms that can be found here. Hey Dane. Hi Jamie. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, thanks for having us out here. Yeah. Well, we've got a bunch of mushrooms on the table, I see. Yeah, we picked a few sample mushrooms for the program today, and mm -hmm. we'll talk about uh, some of the different varieties. In the fall especially, people see mushrooms come up in their yards, and they're wondering, you know, what am I seeing? They're kind of mysterious. <laughs> Can I um, eat it? Exactly. <laughs> but they also read in the paper about people being poisoned by mushrooms, so we offer programs out here at the park for mushroom identification to kind of allow people to come up to speed and figure out kind of what mushrooms they can identify. And knowing how to identify mushrooms is crucial if you plan on eating them. There are some that will make you sick. There are a few that are deadly poisonous even. So if you do plan on eating your mushrooms, you should be on a very familiar basis with them. For chanterelles, for instance, you know, it's an orange mushroom. They have kind of um, more just fall scales, that kind of blunt ridges that run down the stem. Mm. If you cut it open, it's got pure white flesh that's kind of string cheese-like. So there are a number of quote unquote false chanterelles out there that really the only thing they have in common with the chanterelles are both orange and maybe a similar shape. So, you know, you wouldn't go into a grocery store and confuse a head of lettuce with a head of cabbage because they're both brown <laughs> and green, right? So do your homework and make sure you, you're looking at all the characteristics of the mushroom, are sure of your identification before you eat it because again, it can be um, not so good if you get the wrong one. And this is the benefit of coming to someone like you. What do you think that we're going to find? Just like vegetables have seasons, you have mushrooms that will come out early, come out late. So um, there should still see, be some, uh, the, the porcini, the bolites, they should still be out a little bit. The white matsutake, this is a um, very highly prized mushroom, especially over in Asia. Uh, but we do have these in our forests in Oregon. Uh, hopefully we can find some of these. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to check it out. All right. We set off into the park with empty baskets and hearts full of hope. In general, mushrooms like dark, damp environments with lots of underbrush, so we were surrounded by promising areas. If we just kind of head up this trail right here, not much of a trail really. <laughs> I was gonna say. So yeah, what we have here, we've got the white matsutake. They're just starting to come up out of the ground. They're really young specimens. They haven't fully opened up yet, but this is kind of typical habitat, you know, pine trees, lots of salal, real thick brush. So is this kind of the state in which you would want to uh, harvest them? Yeah, the ones that are haven't come out of the annulus or the, the veil yet are usually considered more desirable than the ones that are completely opened up. What's the method of harvesting them? So yeah, so picking them, you want to kind of twist and pull up. Okay. Um, you know, the most of the mushroom is actually underground, so you don't want to you don't want to like rake moss or anything like that. But you can kind of gently twist and pull up, and it shouldn't come out of the ground. Cool. Dane showed me how to clean dirt and sand off the mushrooms once they're out of the ground. You can get a special knife with a brush on the end opposite the blade, like his, or just use a regular pocket knife. It's best to do this right away, rather than waiting until you get home. Just pop right out. Yep, there you go. Look at that. And you kind of are, want to just kind of- Try to get the dirt off as best you can. The veil is very like cotton-like, and it really traps dirt. I don't have a handy brush on this one, but we can get. Yeah, you're getting the, the dirt off. Yeah, we can kind of carve it a little bit too to get mm -hmm. some of that sand away. Yep, you, you can peel kind of that thin layer on the outside. All right, mushrooms in the basket. That was just the beginning. As our hike went on, our haul continued to grow, my basket swelling with shrooms. And then, jackpot. Our fungi foraging found its final frontier. Big fella. Oh my God, such a big long stem too. He had a whole family. Yeah. Yeah, and the matsutake a little bit goes a long way. You said it had that smell, right? Yeah, it's got that cinnamon, kind of a spicy aroma to it. Oh yeah, I kind of like that. Yeah. Like I want to make a tea out of that. Yeah. While it wasn't tea time, it was time to head back and taste some of what we'd collected. But I couldn't help keeping my eyes peeled on the way. That's that's nice. That's a nice young one. So is that a good one to harvest? Oh yeah, yeah, let's do it. All right. Wow, yeah. oh, it's so it's very firm. Yeah, you can kind of. Oh, it just popped right out. Yep. Didn't even need to. There you go. Oh, look at that. And again, I feel like it's not like a perfectionist thing with this, right? Yeah. I mean, get it, get it mostly done. You can always finish up at home, but as long as you uh, 
As you get most of the dirt off, you should be fine. And then you can smell the base of that. It'll have kind of a really nutty, almost kind of like hazelnut type smell. So it looks yeah. really pleasant. That's a cute looking guy too. Yeah, it's a nice one. Wow. Awesome. After the surprise score of that King Bolit, we headed back to the picnic shelter where Dane got a campfire going for us. Yeah, All right. we've got some coals going, so that would be a nice way to try these mushrooms. We cleaned up our mushrooms a little bit more and then cut them into roughly quarter inch thick slices so we could roast them on the grill. For the matsutakes in particular, that's the recommended method to best complement their natural flavors. So the matsutake's uncomparable aroma is easily lost if sauteed like other mushrooms. A far better approach is to roast or grill the slices. The matsutake will be chewy, but the spicy aroma and complex flavor will permeate your mouth, linger in your throat, and eventually go to your head. Oh. Dane spread them out above the fire, and we let the heat do its work. Before long, there was a nice char on each of the slices, and we were ready to give them a try. It should still be pretty chewy, I think. Yeah, it looks like it. That's interesting. So pretty chewy. Yeah. So pretty fresh on the inside. Look at that char on it. Yeah, it tastes kind of nutty, a little earthy. It's pretty mild, you know? I feel like I've, I've heard about Matsutake's being really uh, sort of strong, but I, I find it to be pretty mild. It's good, I like it. Okay, so this is the Portini or the King Bolit. Mm -hmm. Different from the Matsutake. A lot softer. I could see eating this with pasta or something like that. We feasted on fungi for, frankly, forever. But eventually, it was time to flee. Dane, thanks so much for having us out here, yeah. showing us some mushrooms, cooking some up for us. It was delicious. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Happy to do it. Appreciate it. Take right, care. Thanks a lot.